Okay, so okay. Just feel free and uh, yeah, hi. So I'm gonna present my um, JavaScript library to visualize uh, to visualize sorry graphs. So I'm Alexis Jacomi. I work uh, at Linfluence in Paris. It's a it's a French firm, um, especially working on um, web crawling and social network crawling to to analyze the data about uh, brands and firms. So uh, there I'm a front-end engineer and I especially enjoy doing things open source in JavaScript and I'm a fan of Datavis. So first, um, yeah, why visualizing uh, networks matters? I found this code on the internet. So a well-designed visualization tool can allow the user to see structure in a graph data set that is difficult or impossible to see in its raw form. Uh, I think it's especially important for people who are not here, because I, I kind of understand that some of you can read the matrix, but <laughs> I, I didn't know anything about graphs before. <coughs> then I met Jeffy some years ago, and I was neither a developer, neither a mathematician, and I started to play with graphs, and it was just awesome to visualize things and to say, oh, those are my clusters on Facebook, and yeah, so people started to to play with Jeffy to visualize any kind of data in a lot of different fields. And now there's a real need for something more. People might like to share these networks interactively, especially I think. So what to expect from a web graph visualization tool? First, it has to be interactive for me because uh, basically, yeah, we have web apps uh, everywhere today, like when you go to Google Maps, there's things appearing on the maps and just just giving a picture is kind of not enough today, I think. Scalable, uh, yeah, if it just crashes your brother, you're gonna not like it. But, uh, yeah, I <laughs> scalability on the web is not scalability like your scalability. I'm talking about thousands of nodes, which is already something strong to handle on a web visualization, and like tens of thousands of edges, whoa. Yeah, not millions, but still, that's challenging. Cross devices, that's kind of a plus. Customizable, because you have to, you like to display the, your graphs with your settings, your the, your fonts, your colors, everything. Eye-friendly, of course. And open source, for them. Okay, here comes Sigma.js. So, it's interactive. You have um, some API methods to <coughs> give it orders, and it can uh, send events, so you can just bind things on not clicking on things, and you'll see later. It's scalable, which means basically the main point of Sigma.js it it injects it the oh sorry it injects frames during the graph drawing process. So even with big graphs, it's going to take a while to draw it fully, but it's not going to freeze fully. It's it's not going to freeze the browser like it might do with some other tools when big graphs. Cross devices, no flash just using the canvas element. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, customizable. And eye-friendly. Uh, you'll see. I hope you'll like it. And open source release under the MIT license. So I'm going to show you first um, someone who made something really great, I think, with Sigma. Oh, sorry. This one. So. Um, some guys made this thing named Movie Galaxies. They just took um, movie scripts and they just searched for co-occurrences between characters. Then they had networks and they just um, mapped it, mapped them. So I'm going on the website to show you first what I'm talking about. If internet lets me do it. Okay, like let's take 
Pulp Fiction, yeah. You have lots of them. Uh, just go there. Um, if you want later, you can go back to the to the slides and you'll see all the links. So here is a network, but it's not a picture. It's interactive. You can move it and roll over the nodes and see things like between the centrality of the of this node in this graph, etc. You can zoom in. Uh, I don't know this. Yeah, yeah. This is the kind of visualization I'm talking about. So you have, uh, I don't know, yeah, hundreds of movies, <coughs> and that's a nice use case. So I'm going to show you how to use it actually from from sources. Um, oh yeah. So you have a graph, which is not that much interesting, but there's three nodes and two edges. One is connected to two and three, and they have position. So uh, it's JavaScript. Yeah. You have um, just to put in your HTML file a div, which will be um, the container of your visualization, and to import the Sigma script. And then you just have to use a, a sigma.init method on this container and on, the, uh, on this uh, method you will add nodes and edges and then at the end you just have to draw the graph and the result is here okay it's not really awesome but it works so I'm gonna show an example a bit more interesting I guess so I uh, just it wa I used this kind of graph just to try my uh, force directed layouts that to be sure that they were working. So I have n nodes grouped in C groups, and I have E edges, and for each edges uh, I just throw a random, and if it's under a specific uh, probability, this uh, edge will connect two nodes in the same cluster. Um, otherwise it's going to connect uh, two nodes in two different clusters, which makes like I have a random graph kind of clustered. And uh, so of, of course uh, I, I'll just <coughs> throw one color for one group and to be able to observe it. So uh, the good thing with Sigma.js is that you can develop plugins and there's uh, this Force Atlas 2 plugin, which has been already developed. And uh, it's uh, just like a force directed layout you, you can use directly on the, on the web, which is kind of nice. It's the same algorithm they use in Jeffy, actually. And the JavaScript, it's exactly the same, but at the end you have to throw start force atlas 2 instead of draw. And here is the result. As usually, you can move the graph, you can zoom in, out. <coughs> kind of not, not too much code, that's nice. Uh, but you might like to interact a bit more with your graph, of course. So I just take the same graph, but with the, algo with the layout applied from what I showed. And we'll add some buttons to navigate inside the graph. So basically, uh, just divs. Okay. And here is how to bind the. Um, this, is, this example is for a button, when you click on it, you want the graph to, to move up, or the camera to move up. The camera to move up. <laughs> so you just take the position, the current position of, the, of your Sigma instance. You increment 80 or anything you want. The Y position. You say it to go to this new position, and uh, this is JavaScript to okay, <laughs> and so here is the result. I have buttons, and I, when I click the buttons, it moves the graph, which is great. Zoom in, out. So of course you can do a lot more than just this. You can bind things on uh, events, like for example on this uh, Pulp Fiction thing. This uh, this little panel. Here, with between S degree and cluster, it's not from Sigma. The guy I did it by himself. Um, 
It's the same when you when you roll over a node. Actually, every node which is not a neighbor will disappear. This is done with the same kind of, uh, of, of um, triggers on these uh, events. And uh, so you can customize and create your own visualization as you want it to be. So, um, that was really quick, actually. <laughs> so the first code is going to take time. So I'm going to spend some minutes showing some people using it. First, about the scalability thing, I'm going to show this graph. <coughs> Even if the guy kind of used every plugins available at the same time, which makes it sometimes a bit... <coughs> but Sorry. I'm, I'm going to launch on this one to be... <coughs> Oh, it froze my navigator. <laughs> it was not meant to be. Hmm. How big is the graph being loaded? Uh, I'm gonna... I have no idea, actually. But we can easily... There is a global access to any Sigma instance with two basic methods, get nodes count and get edges count. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is this is synchronous loading and bad internet. I'm sure this is not Sigma. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is demo effect. Demo effect. Demo monster. Um, I'm gonna wait and kill this one. Just it was working. Yeah, here it's still working. Okay, I'm gonna take another example. <laughs> yeah, so this uh, this is um, kind of the data viz uh, freelance, and he made this graph about. Um, Programming language's influence. This is internet, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, next time open all the tabs before. I remember. Okay, didn't crash, <laughs> that's better. <laughs> I'm gonna try another one, smaller. I might go back just to Pulp Fiction and play with it. <laughs> okay, nice. <laughs> and it works, it's not dead. Okay, so just about... Um, okay, 1000 and... A bit more than 1,000 nodes for this one, and less than 1,000 edges, which is kind of small. I'd like to show a bigger one, but uh, right now it's like this computer doesn't let me do it. Ah. <coughs> this one is dead. Oh yeah, this one. Here is an example of integration um, made by people from Sciences Po in Paris. <coughs> it's a graph of websites about uh, politics. It was made during the yeah, it's a political web sphere uh, in France. It was done during the French presidential elections. So basically, you have this kind of nice triggers, which makes you. Uh, yeah, you can just uh, see the projection of one category directly on the graph, which is nice. Like this is the left French political <coughs> wing, right wing, extreme right wing, center, etc. 
Uh, I can click on a node. It opens the node in another tab. And here is how many... Yeah, small graph again, but a lot of edges. A lot of... for the web, not for Java or your technologies. Okay. Um, Do you have uh, methods to, uh, uh, you already have hooks to, uh, or would you, how would you suggest uh, offloading some of this calculation uh, to maybe to a remote server rather than uploading all the data on the, on the browser? Maybe? Yeah, actually it might be possible. Uh, the complexity of what the data is displayed on the browser and then doing in, uh, like a level of detail or zooming in, zooming out and doing uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the nearest thing to what you say is a uh, sea dragon, it's another technology, which is you're going to do a huge screenshot of your graph. It's uh, the most scalable thing, it's not interactive at all, unfortunately, but uh, it's going to work as Google Maps. So when you load the graph, you're going to have just one picture, and if you zoom in, you're going to load uh, more detailed pictures, etc. This is... Uh, for this one, you, you might like, uh, if you have actually clusters and uh, meta clusters or this kind of data on the server, you, you, you can just display the graph uh, this way. When you click on a, on a meta node, it's going to expand it or this is possible. You do it actually, no? Yeah. API and then we update the visualization in real time. So basically just like uh number of nodes in your browser load Yeah, but I um I, I might have one bigger one bigger example maybe. Just to show uh, yeah, here is how many? Tell me it's more. Yeah, this is for this kind of networks, which you, you can already have a lot of uh, things about websites or social networks. I mean, a lot of use cases just fit in this uh, less than 5,000 nodes and less than uh, 20,000 edges, and then it's no problem. And you can stream it if you have, but. Uh, I've uh, never found the time to implement streaming examples. Yeah? Uh, how does this compare to like D3 and SVG rendering? Oh, actually, um, someone made a, um, a benchmark about it. Mm -mm -mm. If I can find it, that would be great. Uh, it's way better, even if this uh, one difference is that uh, D3 is just a controller, which means you can bind it on a canvas. And then it's kind of, kind of the same, even if with uh, big networks, uh, the, frame rate, the frame rate with D3 will be way lower, because it's going to render everything in one frame when I inject my frames uh, with uh, continuous drawings. Oh, I wouldn't see it here. Which means like, when you're manipulating uh, SVG, you're going to um, set the SVG in the DOM and the browser will render everything, one shot. If it's big, it's going to take time. Since I'm doing all by myself in Canvas, I can say like, it's been 50 milliseconds you're doing this, uh, could you just draw this and start again, continue? So, when you have a lot of edges, it's going to display uh, not in one frame, but in several frames. This is frames injection. So with big, uh, big graphs in D3, it's gonna just going to freeze. That's the problem. It's like incremental rendering of JPEG. It shows you whatever you've downloaded and then... Kind of. Uh, I use it only for the edges because uh, this is the most expensive thing. And if I use it for the nodes, it's just going to twinkle. That's not good. <coughs> this is how it scales to... Bigger graphs, not big graphs, but bigger for the web. How does this work with the inserting frames if you have like kind of 
like post directive layout and so does that? Oh, for when, when uh, in the default settings, I just uh, <laughs> I never render the edges during the layout is applied. But actually, it's just settings. So if you have a small graph, you can just change the settings and it's going to render everything. You can even um, disable this uh, frame injection. You can render everything in one uh, one frame if, if you prefer, if you have small graphs. And you can even add this uh, frame uh, injections for the nodes, if you have a lot of nodes and you don't want the user to manipulate. And it's, yeah, settings. Yeah, just same question, same answer. <laughs> That's uh, the other point is that it's dedicated to graphs because D three is kind of uh, awesome, but it's has uh, it's kind of almost a new language. <coughs> it's easy to to learn, and uh, it's like ten times this uh, or five times uh, heavier than uh, Sigma JS as minified versions. I mean, which actually we do we don't care when we have to load the uh, JSONs, which make like half a mega, but uh, yeah, it's uh, this this thing, I mean, <coughs> might be the, be the best reason, this frame injection things. Uh, sorry? You have 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> Let's go for more questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank <No>. you. <laughs> yeah, that was good. And, uh, yeah, website, Twitter, and GitHub, if you're interested in. I've been using this, and it's quite cool project. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so, questions? There is any question? Or on the... Uh, quite yeah. silly question. So, on D3, you have several um, pre-baked examples. So, do you find uh, several examples on SigmaJS as well? Uh, you mean, sorry? Uh, examples of layout. Layout, oh. Um, uh, I've never found the time. The only layout I have, I have actually two layouts. There is this uh, Force Atlas 2 layout, which is continuous, etc. And then there is like, I just wrote a circular one to show, it was a sample to show how to write a plugin. But actually, since it's easy to write your own plugins, mm -hmm. you might write your own layouts. Silly answer. <laughs> Yeah, I hope I'll do this as well. No, because the only thing is that on, on this three you have like... Yeah, everything is already examples, here. So you just take them, change maybe three characters and... <laughs> but take the, take the title no, and... <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's for at the same time, uh, zooming is not... Uh, when, you, when you install D3, mm -hmm. the zooming blocking, the zoom blocking, it doesn't work uh, natively, you have to implement it. I mean, okay. there's other things you will have to deal with, so... It says you, I mean, D3 is like maybe more mature, uh, obviously more mature and more strong. But I think for graphs, uh, Canvas will always be more scalable and more usable. And um, graph visualization deserves it, its own um, dedicated libraries, I guess. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, questions? <coughs> yeah. Uh, actually, I, when I wrote it, it was uh, full uh, around Canvas, but I'm thinking about maybe refactor just to make it possible to change the renderer. Uh, that I didn't, but there's someone in the Jeffy project who has actually the, yeah, the most scalable uh, thing because he's using WebGL. Uh, the name of the project is GraphGL, I think. He was in Fosdem last year. I don't, I don't remember if he was speaking or not. <coughs> yeah, there's uh, one solution with uh, GraphGL. The problem is that there is no fallback. So you have to actually have WebGL. But no, currently Sigma is only on Canvas. Okay. okay no thank you very much. So thank you. <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs>